and welcome. If you're here because you want to speak English more fluently, with confidence, more naturally, then you're in the right place. This English speaking lesson is perfect for intermediate to advanced English learners, speakers who want to improve their vocabulary and add more phrases up their sleeve, like tools that you can use in your next conversation. I'm Gabby from GoNaturalEnglish.com and I'm going to share with you the exact phrases that you can use to sound more natural in your next English conversation. These advanced phrases will help you to interrupt, to join any conversation, to change the topic, to ask and to offer an opinion, to deal with controversial topics, to get a conversation back to a topic that you would like to discuss more, and to end the conversation in a graceful way. So these phrases are going to help you a lot in your next conversation. I just know it and I'm excited to share them with you. So let's jump in because I think we want to start with how to actually jump into a conversation. This is a phrase that we can use to interrupt in a polite, friendly way. Can I jump in here? To jump into a conversation means to enter, to participate, to start to speak in a group conversation, maybe a meeting or between a group of friends. Could I just jump in here? Can I jump in? I have something I'd like to add. You can also ask, would anyone like to jump in and share your thoughts? Another phrase you can use is, do you mind if I add to that? If you have something to share or do you mind if I share something? Of course, you can use more traditional phrases like excuse me or sorry, but again, these are more traditional and they might seem a bit more formal. If you're in a work situation, then they might be good. But if you have a more casual work environment, then try, can I jump in or could I share something really quickly? And of course, there are little words that we can use to jump in or to interrupt in a conversation like well or <clears throat> or um. You can use these sounds or words that we call interjections to jump in or interject into a conversation. Sometimes people think that interrupting is rude, but it doesn't have to be. It all depends on the way you do it. So if you use one of these phrases, then people will know that you're being respectful and you just want to join the conversation and add your two cents. And we all want to hear what you have to say. So don't be shy about jumping in to your next conversation. Let me jump in and tell you about how you can improve your English more quickly with my complete English course, Fluent Communication. I've worked directly with thousands of English learners from around the world to help them quickly advance their English speaking skills and you could be the next one with small group live online speaking practice and premium recorded lessons, quizzes, assignments, and direct individual feedback just for you. You get exactly what you need to speak English fluently, to advance to a level where you feel great communicating in English in any situation with anyone. So if you're ready to get fluent, then let's go. You can get more information at gonaturalenglish.com slash pre-reg, P-R-E-R-E-G. Now let's talk about how to offer your opinion and how to ask for other people's opinions to keep a conversation going because there's nothing like dreaded silence to make a conversation just fall flat. If you want to have better conversations to keep them going, you need to be able to share your opinion and to help others share their opinions. That's what a really good conversationalist does is to help others who might be feeling a little shy to participate as well. 
You can ask, what do you think? Or what is your opinion? Or do you agree? These are quite basic, but there are more advanced phrases we can use too. What's your point of view? Point of view means your opinion. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that topic? I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'd like to know what you think on this topic. Why don't you share your thoughts? Do you have anything that you'd like to add? I'd like to hear from you, or I'd like to hear from the name of the person. I'd like to hear from John on this topic. John, what do you think? These are all great questions to solicit or to ask for someone else's opinion and to help others participate in the conversation. So now, what about offering your opinion? Of course, we can use traditional, typical phrases like, I think, my opinion is, or in my opinion, in my point of view, I think, to me, and then you say your opinion, Another phrase I like is from my perspective or it seems to me that I find that or I feel that from my point of view, maybe it's just me, but I think, and then share your opinion. Now, sometimes when you're talking to someone, they get excited and they start talking about a million different things. So when the conversation goes off topic, or off track, you need to have some phrases that will help you to bring it back to what you'd rather be talking about, or maybe you want to revisit something that you talked about a little while ago, but the topic of conversation has since changed. In that case, you could say, could we go back to what we were discussing before? Could we return to the topic about la la la, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And of course you would say what the topic was. Or I'd like to touch on, I'd like to touch on that topic that we were just talking about. I'd like to go back to, I'd like to return to, I'd like to touch on that topic. If you get interrupted, maybe you get a text or a phone call, you might want to resume the conversation by saying, what was I just saying? to go back to what you were just saying. Or where were we after an interruption? This is a very wonderful phrase you can use. Where were we? Ah, yes, we were just talking about blah, blah, blah. Now I wanna share a few phrases you can use to clarify what you've heard. Maybe you think that you've understood fully, but it's always a good idea to clarify and confirm. So you can say, what I think you're saying is, and then summarize what you've heard very briefly. Or are you saying that, and then summarize. Do you mean, or in other words, what you're saying is, or what I think you're trying to say is, so what you're saying is, or so what you're asking is, and then you repeat what you think you heard. And this is really helpful, even native speakers do this all the time. It's very, very common and people won't get upset. It's not being boring or repeating too much. It's important to clarify and confirm important pieces of information or questions that people have asked you. Now, how about controversial topics? Sometimes when you ask an opinion, it's not just something as simple as what's your favorite color or your favorite food, but you want to discuss something like religion or politics, and these can be touchy, controversial, or hot topics, but they're important for us to discuss. It can be enjoyable as long as we stay open-minded and respectful towards each other. So how do you ask about controversial topics or opinions without offending while staying respectful. Let's talk about some phrases that will be very handy for you in these situations. I don't know if everyone agrees, but I think, and then say your opinion. This may be a contentious opinion, but I think. Not everyone will agree with me, but I'd say, or I'd think, 
This may be an unpopular opinion, but I think. We may not see eye to eye, but I think. Now, when you disagree with someone and the conversation reaches a point where you don't feel like you're really hearing each other, maybe each of you are uh, getting a bit heated and it feels like it's time to close the conversation down, one phrase that I really like is to each his own. To each his own means that each person is entitled to their own opinion and we can agree to disagree. That's another great phrase. I love using these because they help keep the peace and they acknowledge that it's okay that we have different opinions. We can still respect each other. So these are two very good phrases I highly recommend, especially when talking about controversial hot topics. Another two that you could use to present your opinion in a respectful way are respectfully, I disagree, or respectfully, I think, or I'm not trying to rock the boat. To rock the boat means uh, to upset anyone. I'm not trying to upset anyone, but, or I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. You know, when a bird gets upset, their feathers kind of get ruffled. This is where the phrase comes from. I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but I don't agree, or I think. All right, let's talk about when you do agree with someone. Of course, you can say, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Or, I couldn't agree less. If you disagree, you say, I couldn't agree less. But if you agree, you can say, I couldn't agree more. Or there are simple words that you can use to show you agree, like totally, completely, 100%. I'm with you on this. And to disagree, we have a few more phrases like, I disagree. That can come off as very direct and a bit rude if you simply say, I disagree. So it's a good idea to use some softeners, words that show that you are trying to be polite even though you disagree. It's always a good idea to show that you see the other person's point of view. So you can begin your opinion by saying, I understand what you're saying or I hear what you're saying, I understand what you mean, I can see your point, or I can see how some people would think that way, but I think, I see what you mean, I see where you're coming from, but I think, I agree with you up to a point, but I think. Okay, now what if you really want to be direct? What if you don't want to be so nice and polite? Then it's okay to say, I disagree, I think, or I'm sorry, or I'm afraid I can't agree. I'm afraid is an interesting word to use in this situation because it doesn't mean that you're scared. It just means kind of like, I'm sorry, I don't agree. And remember that your tone and your body language are so important when you disagree. If you say these phrases in a high, light, kind of nice, polite tone, then they'll be polite. I'm afraid I can't agree versus a lower, harsher tone. I'm afraid I can't agree. There's a difference. So keep that in mind. If your body language is, you know, your face is angry and you're huffing and puffing, oh, I'm afraid I can't agree. Obviously that has a different meaning than if you're smiling and mm, I'm afraid I can't agree. So keep this in mind, phrases and the words that you're using are just half of your communication. The other half is your gestures, your tone of voice, your facial expressions, your body language. And so communication is very interesting in this way. But I digress. Let's get back to the topic. Let's get back on track and I have a few more phrases for you. You could say, I don't mean to be rude, but I disagree. You could also say, let's agree to disagree or to each his own. 
Okay, now in your conversations, it's really, really important that you learn how to drive them. How do you drive a conversation? By changing the topic. So when you want to change to a new topic, there are some really good ways to do that smoothly. For example, that reminds me, and then you can say anything you want, or this is kind of random, but which means this has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but I want to share something. Now, if you have a somewhat related topic you want to talk about, you can say, speaking of, speaking of that, or speaking of the topic, and then say your new idea. Before I forget, let me tell you about blah, blah, blah. Ah, have I told you about blah, blah, blah? Or did you see the news? Did you see blah, blah, blah? Did you hear about blah, blah, blah? By the way, did I tell you? While we're on the topic, let me tell you about blah, blah, blah. And when you're ready to close down and end a conversation, you need a phrase to do it smoothly. Don't just say, Bye. <laughs> you want to have some kind of signal that you're ready to end the conversation. Like it has been great or it was great talking with you. People will know when you say this, that the conversation is ending or you can say something like it's getting late. I have to go or I have to run or I have to get back to work now or, Oh, I have so many things to do. I'm sorry. I have to get going. Or, I'm so glad we had this time to talk. I really look forward to seeing you again soon. Or you can end with appreciation. Thank you so much for your time talking today. I really appreciate it. It was so nice to catch up. So, I hope that this helped with some new advanced phrases for your next English conversation. Thank you so much for your time watching this lesson. You're doing amazing just by being here. You have improved your English so much in so little time. If you'd like to learn fluent English faster, then come to gonaturalenglish.com slash pre-reg to get information about my complete English speaking course, Fluent Communication. I'll see you there. Thanks so much. Bye for now.